The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Tsuburaya Productions. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Toku Talk. Today, Marcus and Jacob here, we will be doing our retrospective thus far on Reiwa Super Sentai. Yes. And I will not mince words, it is the 180 degree opposite... Even more so, perhaps, I mean, in terms of, like, degrees of betterness than what Common Rider has given degrees us. Degrees of betterness. Yes. It's, that is... That's the same way that you read a cake. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. I like cake. Why not? Uh, but, yeah. Oh, my God. Something about these With Common last... Rider, we had the one show that was great. And then we go over to Super Sentai, and... Oh. These have all been great. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of Kira Major like Jacob is. Yeah, but true. even I know that was pretty good. Um, but it's basically just been three and a half years of uh, not missing. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> the role that Super Sentai has been on. I'm really Especially considering how the Heisei era ended. Oh, Ryu With one Ryu Soldier, one of the worst shows Super Sentai has ever produced, uh, which was followed by what I think is one of the, which uh, was preceded by what I think is one of the best with uh, Lupat. Yeah. Lupat was great, Lupat was new and exciting, and then they went back to dinosaurs again and completely proceeded to shoot themselves in the foot, because that show is terrible. And then we get Kira Major. Kira Major... I will. I stand by this. The first episode did not do anything to impress. I did not. I do not think that show starts very strong. It does have its episode zero, but yeah. But but even, but even even without episode zero, like the first episode where we are introduced to our Red Ranger outside of the four who have already gotten their powers. But this is the. It is the stripped down back to basics. Just. Cut out all the chaff and nonsense and just focus on what can make what like Sentai is at its core. Yeah. Okay, this is Sentai making a show about Sentai. Yeah. It is it is as back to basics as you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. But it does so with such joyous energy. It's 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 very funny. It has great acting, it's got great characters, it's so much fun to watch. That it works. Yeah. I can agree with that. Uh, I I think, for the most part, I thought it was quite the good show. I like all of the characters. Mm. They were pretty great. Pink got shafted. I'm not even going to try to deny that, though. I think she got the least to do with her occupation proper. She's a doctor. Mm -hmm. But this is also happening during the era of COVID. Since Red got COVID halfway like, oh, part dear. of the way through it. He was the reason... Uh, I don't want to say he's the reason. Like, really, it was just the worldwide pandemic. But yeah. he was sort of the catalyst for both Zero One and Kira Major, like, being up there for about five weeks. Mm. Um, as and, long as he's recovered now. And I think that the ending also wasn't that strong. Oh, I will agree. I will <laughs> agree. For as, much as I, for as much as I adore this show, the opening, I think, is weak. Not the opening theme song, but, like, the opening of the show proper. And the... Final episode where we have uh, the angel girl like holding the cubes and being like, ah, this character, here are some of their character highlights. That was really dumb. Not that right. was really dumb and really and like stupid for all the wrong reasons. But everything else that comes in between that, it's it's like it's like a mediocre bread with like the most amazing, delicious sandwich contents you could imagine. I think that the that you can forgive the bread. My biggest issue was speaking of forgiveness was sort of the whole thing with the uncle being forget a little bit too quickly. Hmm. At the end of this, he was like, "Oh, he was being manipulated this entire time." But the yeah. dark evil energy, but they never really alluded to that. The dark evil energy, but also the um the other guy, the guy, the guy, the guy in orange. I forget his name, but he kind of. Does does a face turn at the end? As oh well. yeah, I can't remember his name. Um, yeah. Sorry, we watch a lot of shows. It's hard to remember names. Crunchlap, that's his name. Mm. Yeah, just uh, they had a little bit too many heel turns at the end of this. And as much as I love you, Donna, this will be a face turn because they're becoming good guys. Yeah, it, it just wasn't uh, that great. It wasn't that well done, and I think they missed a little bit. However, uh, after this. <laughs> After this, where we have Kikai Sentai 
Zen Kaijar. This is when since I decided to trend every week and it hasn't stopped. Really? Okay. <laughs> like I think it was a little bit at Kyojo where people were like sort of getting used to the new show. Mm. But it never stopped going forward because King Ogier has, you know, everybody was talking about King Ogier every single week. Oh. People talking about King Ogier. Every <laughs> week they were talking about Don Brothers. Mm. After a little bit, everybody was talking about Zenkaiger because it was just like, what is this show? Zenkaiger Zen- was comedy. It is comedy. It is, it is action. It is the only... T- uh, Toku I've ever seen that has a Terminator 2 reference, so it gets a billion it, points for that. It's <laughs> weird. It's it's weird in the best way. It's it heartfelt. It's just, yes. there were so many good things about Zenkaiju. Because it knew what it wanted to be. It just wanted to be a good comedy sentai with good characters and a lot of heartfelt moments. Mm-hmm. Especially when they realized, oh, Stacy could be popular. Let's bring him back after we originally planned to get rid of him. <laughs> and he ends up becoming one of the most popular characters in the entire goddamn show. <laughs> This show was great. The it also has one of my favorite moments. We didn't talk about it. Uh, what is in, that? Uh, the review proper. What is that? It was the episode where they were having bad luck. Hmm. And he mm. tried to use the Zenroku Zenkai cannon to like summon some uh, help from other Sentai members. Yeah. And he summoned all the Sentai members that died. <laughs> and it was like, you, they had this moment where they, like some of them, they look down and they see Battle Cossack's uh, outfit. And they're like, huh? And then the monster like shoots Battle Cossack Yellow Four One and uh, Key Ranger Two, uh-huh. and like they all get blown up. And the Yellow Four like stumbles over into the Kikai- uh, to the Zinkaijus, and they all just explode. <laughs> it is the funniest thing, and it's so wrong. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it feels so right. It, like they had that the Jetman moment of how the dare they Jetman moment. We have t- we have talked about this ad nauseum, like but that, it stands. That whole episode as one of the funniest things that, that Sentai whole, that Toku has ever done. Whole episode yeah. of the members falling in love with various things. You had. Uh, Gaon and Juran falling in love with each other. Majine and uh, um, Flint they're having their whole Yuri romance over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you had uh, our main characters and Kaiju falling in love with ice cream. <laughs> Why not? Ice cream. It was so funny. The entire episode was just great from start to finish. It's peak. It's peak comedy. And then the end where they just. They recreate it. They recreate the end of Jetman. They, they re- the way they recreate it, shot for shot. The way... Minifik! Minifik! <laughs> Moment of silence as the monster is sitting on the bench and it's just dead silent. And then we get... Th- and then the silence is broken by our Toko explosion. Our patented monster blows up it explosion. Is so funny. It was the most how dare they I've ever seen in a Toku. Because you can tell that the creators of the show and the writers of the show yeah. and the producers and everybody loved uh, like Sentai as a whole because it's an anniversary season yeah and they really played into that it was comedy like Go Kaiser that came before it once again we are taking uh, we have a team of outsiders and we are introducing them to the world of Sentai and all the help and wonder that it can offer them in their in their quest for good And the way they are able to, just the the writing in the show is just top tier, especially when it comes to the comedy. I don't think a show has ever, like a comedy show, like specifically talking about Toku, has ever hooked me so fast as when in the first episode, um, I forget the uh, Zoo Ranger mech guy's name. Jiran. Jiran. When... When he gets his gun and just like shoots one of the minions point blank. (laughs) Sorry for that look on my face a second ago. That mentioned the Gokaiju reminds me I had to tell you something after uh, something after we finished this. Oh, well, I hope it's nothing bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's probably something bad. Anywho. Yeah. <laughs> any 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 but who. Uh, yeah, Zenkaiju. Yes, yeah, Zenkaiju. It's, it it's great. It's so good. And everything with Stacy and the grandmother. Mm. How dare they? How dare this show be as good as it was? It is a show that also... It looks great. Yeah. There is one, one thing that we're starting to see. Like, Kira, Kira Major has some incredible combat cinematography. The, the, cor- the choreography, the bringing, bringing Ultraman directors in to choreograph mech fights and the way they shoot them. It's, some, it's like the best it's ever looked. Um, in terms of, like, the overall design and look of the show, it's 
again, pretty stripped down, pretty pretty basic, but it works for what they're going for. And then we get to Zenkaiger, and like the whole show looks like it was shot in a candy store. And I think it, it works. And I think it works. <laughs> I mean, like literally and figuratively, because like everything there is, so, like there is something about like the costumes, the saturation, and the color levels they 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 stick with, and the way everything just pops off the screen. And the way, like, as the show goes along, they start messing with Sentai tropes a little bit. Mm. They start doing a non-standard roll call every episode. Every episode has something that affects the roll call, and I think that's what makes it that much funnier. Mm-hmm. Nothing is standard than the show. And the, the, oh my god. Like, like Zuron being invisible, and, like, the camera pans to, like, where he would be, but he's not there, and he's like, guys, I'm over here! <laughs> and the logo has to, like, move over, and they have to move <laughs> over to be next to him. Or, like, the whole one where they have, like, the the rear wind, and they all have, like, run backwards. So they were all doing their roll call running back. Oh, my God. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 episodes. Great, great stuff. And I think that's sort of what helped people move into Don Brothers. Mm. Because you didn't really have that moment of just, like, oh, you know, I'm not that interested in the next show. It's like, no. People really stuck around when it came to Don Brothers, and then they had a reason mm. to stick around. Because what? <laughs> you talk about Sentai tropes. They don't even have a roll call until the end. <laughs> Not till the last episode. And it's the only one we get. In the show proper. Yeah. Like, you, you get ones in specials that they have along the way, but yeah. the show is really, really. I mean, they have another special coming out next this weekend mm-hmm. for Dawn Brothers. Because if, if Kira Major was back to basics, this is taking the book of Sentai tropes, taking the book of our history, everything that has come before it, and just going. And what if we didn't? Speaking of Kira Major, <laughs> Yodana's getting into the special soon. I'm okay with that. These past, these past <laughs> couple like it, shows, Donna. like Don Brothers and Kira Major, not so much Zenkaiger because I think, uh, well, no. The reason for Zenkaiger is because of the fact that he's in Don Brothers. So that's where Kaito is. <laughs> yes. Because he and Stacy have, their, have whole, another one, yeah. have their whole thing coming into the Don Brothers world where there's another version of Stacy mm. in this as uh, the ultimate rival. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, in a way, might make y'all kiss, and I'm alright with that. <laughs> <laughs> no kiss. Because, I mean, this show, at its heart, was just multiple stories sort of working alongside each other. There was no main villain, really, in Dawn Brothers. We had antagonists yeah. with the... Uh, Cerebrans. Cerebrans, thank you. Sonoi, Sonoza. Sonoi, Sonoza, Sononi. Yeah. Uh, we, we have them, and we have them as antagonistic forces, but the way... They integrate them into the story. Just like this show, its script, its everything is just 10 out of 10. Yeah. it's th- This is the, I think, the best writing that Toku has ever had. It's like, you know, outside of us having to fight in our suits and stuff, mm-hmm. you end up having two love stories for the most part between... Three, technically, because you got... Um... Oh, well, I'm talking about between the Cerebrans and oh, the Dark okay. Brothers proper. It's like you have two love stories going on. Yes, I'm calling it a love story because let's face it, Damo Mutaro and Sonoi was a love story. They have a romantic song together. I agree 100%. <laughs> uh, you have Sonoza, Sonoza uh, you know, being the editor and producer mm-hmm. for Yellow's manga. Yeah. But then you also have the story of Black Pink and Black Pink and what the uh, uh, Juto, like all together. Mm hmm. It was just like. And then you end up having a ranger who's almost nine air constantly in a state of antagonism. You have Pink just being a bad guy for a good portion of the show. The amount of times that Pink, that uh, Pink, what is it? What is it? What is he? He's the Phoenix Kiji brother. Kiji brother. Thank you. I didn't want to. Commute. It's like Inu, Saru, Kiji, Oni sister, and Don then Don Motaro. Uh, so yeah, Kiji brother. The way they use him and the way. He's written in the story with his wife and what they how they tie that in with Inu Brother and the way the way it, the, and especially like the way it ends like everything like ends with like a nice little bow yeah tied around it but there are still things it, that are wrong. but it but it also left me like hungering for like oh my goodness like if you made Don Brothers two and it was just more of hanging out with these characters I'd be a hundred percent for That's that. That's pretty much what the Don Booty thing is supposed to be this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um. Or last week, and I think as the time this comes out. But it's just... You, you have a sixth ranger. Yeah. Who's around, but he feels more like a 90s era sixth ranger because he's not there that often. Yeah, he's, he's not there that often. And then when he comes back, he's an asshole. 
<laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's kind of a jerk, and the way they what they did with his character, I think, oh, was, was pretty interesting. With so much of his life just being a lie, yeah. and him being the only one who's aware of it, and the acting, the casting, like it's all perfect. Like everyone is perfectly cast. The actors are always giving one hundred and ten percent, and they still hang out quite often together. Apparently, oh, that makes me happy. Yeah, they're just around mm-hmm. each other, and I really just enjoy the projects that they're doing. It, it's it's and I, it's fantastic, and one of the reasons that I think we will that we see that so often, like they're still hanging out with each other, is because Don Brothers again. It was a show about characters, and it was. I just, mentioned this about Geats in our writer retrospective, but this this whole show, there are entire episodes. It seems like where we get maybe thirty seconds of action. It's like we get we'll get like a token little fight of some kind. It's happened multiple times in King of the Jury as well. Oh, yay. That, that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, and the story's been great. That's good. And uh, good because the writing is good, of course. But, like, there are so many episodes where it's like, we're not going to focus on this being a Sentai. We're, we're not, this is not a show about Sentai. This is a show about characters. This is, this is essentially a J-drama that happens to be a toku. It's Jetman. And it's Jetman. It's the- Which makes sense because the New Way wrote that, too. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, he comes back for this, and we're just like... They, that that's a new way quality. The way the way they incorporate just like the way it is a toku on top of being a drama on top of being just just a great character piece on like what is it like things that like make you think of like what does it mean for like somebody like Momotaro to be caught in this like cyclic never ending you know battle of being a hero and I think he's that's... he's been you know like this Don Momotaro thing has happened multiple times. And every time he's had people that he's had to say goodbye to, that and he's th- had to forget about. I think that's the, the thing sort of here, because they make sure that the story doesn't really focus on him that often, mm. unless it's with Sonoy. <laughs> that's, that's usually where they end up tethering him to. They tether him to Sonoy the most, because their relationship is, in all honesty, a really big driving force yeah. in this show. All the relationships are really big driving for you. This show is about relationships, like you said. Mm-hmm. It's not about... It is, it is about relationships. It is about characters. It is not about Sentai action. It's not about spandex. They're there. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. They're well done. Yeah. But that's not... That's not... It's not the reason this show was made. Yeah. It feels... Like, it's like one of the first times... It might be the first time that I feel like... When we set out to make our annual Sentai... There was a real idea here behind this. And that idea there, was having Inoue take over the writing room. Because this man can write a Sentai. I'm not going to say that for every writer every writer that he's written. But man, the two Sentai that he's been like the main writer on. They're some of the best. And the sales <laughs> came back up. With mm-hmm. him. Like they were going up as in Kaiju, mm-hmm. but then they shot up again in mm-hmm. Don Brothers and they seemed to shot up again in King Ojo. And I can't help but wonder if the writing had something to do with that because if 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 I'm watching this and it's like I really like you know Don Momotaro as a character, I really like him, I want to buy that action figure because I like him as a person. I, I Not think, just because his suit looks cool, just I like him. I think that that's sort of the thing with like like I said, this was trending on Twitter. Pretty much every week. Uh, who is somebody's daughter? Somebody's daughter. Somebody famous's daughter. Uh, just dressed up as Oni's sister. Ah, here we are. Back in. Uh, Larry Burkhead? Hmm. Yeah, apparently that was in People Magazine. <laughs> Her dressing up as Oni's sister. His daughter. Larry Burkhead's daughter. Interesting. Dressed up as Oni's sister. In because People she, Magazine. She loved the show. So... <laughs> Wow. That's crazy to me. The fact that Don Brothers ended up being a People magazine. The show is wild. This yeah. show is just like, oh my, like when it trends every week from the first episode and just doesn't stop. <laughs> that's still so unbelievably wild to me. And it's mm. usually just because, you know, there's a moment when people also end up talking about the story, not just how cool something looks. You know? I think that ends up saying a lot more for the show proper. Absolutely. And I can say the same thing for King Ogre, because we're getting close to the end point with uh, mm. Boon Boomger coming up soon. Coming up. A little bit worried about that name. Uh, <laughs> name is a name. My show could still be great. Yeah, I think I'm just a little bit, it's like, uh, after the last couple of years of not being really standard, mm. I don't want to go back to a standard. That's how we got Gotchard. 
To um, so go back to Don Brothers for a moment, though, before we talk about King Odor. One of the things that the show really nailed, uh, for as much as we've talked about on the show about how much we don't like overpowered Reds, and how much we don't like Reds stealing the focus, there is an art to doing an unlikable character. Yeah. There is an art to making a character who pretty much sucks. And they nailed it with Momoitaro. Yeah. The way he he is an overpowered Red Ranger, but he's a dick. He is a dick. He's a dick. He is not shy about it. No. He cannot lie. No. The way they... That's how... The way, <laughs> he's dead. Yay! Because <laughs> whenever he lies too much, he dies. Right. Or even lies once. He can't lie at he, all. He can't lie. God, that was so funny. It was, it was very funny. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and I did. And, it, and everybody was like, what? <laughs> no, it, was, it was like then I think uh, Sonoy was like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? What, what happened to my boyfriend? But uh, yeah, the way Don Brothers did everything was amazing. So without going into spoilers, you've... I've only watched what we've watched for First Impressions, so I can't really comment on it. But what I have seen of King Oger, I have quite liked. Yeah. So, what do you think so far? It's been fantastic. Mm. It's been really good. The characters really drive this show. Because, like, you end up having a lot of interpersonal relationships. Jeremy ends up driving a good portion of uh, the latter half of the first arc before the time skip. And it's just how the show ends up setting itself up to work towards resolution and having things, you know, interpersonal relationships really end up playing into how the kings act. Mm. It's not just them, you know, acting kingly and everything. Like, no, they mess up a lot. But they have people, they have a support network. And I think that's Aww, sort of the things that nice. end up making it a lot better for them. Like, this whole, this last episode was all about Blue and his relationship with his retainer. Hmm. And how they, you know, met each other and things like that. It's just been, it's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed what they're doing. I'm really going to enjoy, because uh, the show's not on this past weekend. It'll be on this week. Uh, Yell's episode is up next after they end up coming back from Kyoru Yulin. So, I'm, I'm just really excited Sounds to like see. It's like a theme the, park. Yeah. The dinosaur theme park. Yes, with the, yeah, the Kyoru Yuji. Um, except red and gold. Mm-hmm. But I'm just really excited to see where this show is going to keep going. Like, I honestly think that episode, that first episode post-time skip, which is the first episode post-time skip, Mm -hmm. um, is one of the best, like, oh, how fucked are we? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. It's one of the best, like, frame Sentai episodes I've seen. And, like, the episode where things started happening to him is crazy. It's so good, and like seeing the manipulation going on behind the scenes. Because the next couple weeks in the show are just like, how are they going to fix this? Mm. I'm very interested, and like I said, King Oja's been once again trending. I think ever since the third episode, every week. Okay, people were, had to get off of Don Brothers a little bit. <laughs> and now we're just like, I don't blame. Them. I miss Don Brothers. It's been so different how it's filmed, how it's produced, how the story is written, how big the story feels, but it doesn't feel like it's taking off too much. It doesn't feel it, like it's overreaching. Yeah, it doesn't feel like what Bill did mm. the further that show went along. This show is like, oh, it sort of makes sense how we got to this point. Mm. Cool. I look forward to reviewing that when we do in a few months. It'll probably be in March, yeah. Mm. Look forward to that. Yeah. But that'll do it. Uh, Sentai, yeah, you've been crushing it lately. Keep it up. Yeah, you Keep have it up, thoughts, Sentai. And it's been pink. It's It's been like the past... Three and a half years of peak. Yeah. You're hoping Boop Boonger is good. I'm hoping. We shall see. Uh, can't wait till we... Name is a name. We, we shall see what happens when we actually watch the show. Can't wait till we end up getting our first uh, rumor cast for it, too. Mm. And whenever the... Uh, press conference? The press conference. That'll probably end up being in February. Or either January or February is when the press conference will come. Hmm. Well, that'll do it. Tell yeah. us what you think of Reiwa Sentai so far in the comments below. And which is your favorite? Do you have a least favorite? If you do, let us know. And don't forget to join us all the things. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.